All right, Minority Leader, thank you for staying with us. A few more questions for you. Parliament, uh, third session of the 13th Parliament is on. But I want to go back, just one more question on the issue of IABC. Worst case scenario, the Makanda team decides to go on with recruiting. What is the plan for uh, Azimio and <coughs> ODM? You know, I said earlier on that uh, that's a bridge we shall cross once we get there. As far as we are concerned, it is a route that is extremely dangerous for the country. What I hear is a lack of plan from your side. We, no, 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 you can't say that. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I cannot disclose to you our plans. But you have a plan. Uh, currently, what we are focusing on is the reconstitution of the IBC through the Nadiko roadmap. Anything beyond that, let's deal with it once we get there. Is the other side in Parliament, the majority side, in agreement that this report is before us, we need to, because I, I believe you speak to the majority leader, we need to thrash this before Parliament and not the direction that the court is taking we us. We are largely in agreement. Remember, actually, that the motion that set up the NADCO itself was co-sponsored by my colleague, uh, the Honorable Chungwa, and I. And uh, yesterday, we actually in the House Business Committee, the first House Business Committee meeting this session of Parliament, we did agree uh, quite amicably uh, and that we needed to prioritize uh, the NADCO uh, report. And, and indeed, it has been scheduled for debate tomorrow. That, okay. that shows uh, how, how, how serious uh, okay. the, the House is taking this matter of NADCO. Yeah. One of the concessions <coughs> that uh, they made at NADCO was the issue of the cost of living. Why is that issue right now? Is it also because sort of you, your side, tried to push them to the wall on this, but they're not compromising. Where is this issue? Because it's the, the biggest issue to Kenyans right now, the cost of living. That issue is no longer an issue in NADCO, because as you clearly understand, uh, the NADCO report did not address it. Yeah, since uh, our partners, our colleagues, uh, declined to, to, to accept uh, the very progressive proposals that we had in terms of dealing with the cost of living. So it's, so it's an issue we, we say we shall deal with outside NARCO. As, as a meal? Well, it is the responsibility, responsibility of the government to, to bring down the cost of living. But we committed, as a meal, that we shall not tire reminding the government that uh, the cost of living is actually killing Kenyans, that something has to be done, and pretty fast. The yes. cost of living? Yes, yes. In December, just before January, there's a lot that was said by your leader regarding uh, the plans for January and going forward. Um, for the people who say that uh, Azimio, the whole team, is just back, no bite. I don't think so. <laughs> we don't just back, uh, Ken. You know very well, for sure. We mean business, yes. And when we set out to do something, we do it uh, 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 properly. Yeah, uh, but, but you must also understand that, as the Bible says, there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. All this time since uh, uh, the set up of NADCO up to now, we have actually chosen, as a meal, to give dialogue a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And through the NADCO framework. Yeah. So any other actions that you might be thinking about could still be in the offing, but it's not the right time. Okay. To deal with them, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Away from that, the affordable housing bill. This is... Uh, the president's project, and I know it's, um, it's currently at committee stage. This is one of the things that is a pet subject on uh, the platforms and podiums across the country. You know, this <coughs> housing issue was there in the finance bill 2023, and it's an issue that Kenyans really ventilated about. Remember, even as we speak, the matter of the housing levy is still in court. As a matter of fact, it is at the Court of Appeal, okay, awaiting a termination. It's an issue that has continued to occupy the minds of Kenyans. First and foremost, because the government itself, when it came before us at NADCO in Bomas, they were unable to clearly define what this housing levy was, whether it was a levy, a tax, whatever, a saving. There was total confusion. Now they are attempting. They are attempting now to sanitize the whole thing by way of the affordable uh, housing bill. 
which is again scheduled for uh, debate at the second reading stage tomorrow in the House. One thing that must be clear is that a pig will remain a pig, whether you pack it lipstick, you know, still a pig. No amount of sanitization is going to cleanse the housing levy. First and foremost, who says that housing is a priority for this country? Who says? And yet everywhere we go, people are crying about food. And even if it were to be a priority, who says it has to be mandatory? That we must tax, tax every Kenyan. Now they're going even for those Kenyans who are not having pay slips. The that. president says. Yes. So, so is the president the country? That's the question again you must ask yourself. So whichever way you look at it, this is an idea which will not see the light of the day, however much they try to push it. It's an idea that needs to be looked into. In a spirit of dialogue, my own party leader, uh, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, suggested about a month ago that the Kenyans need to have a conversation on this issue because it is so divisive that if left to move the way it is moving, it could create more divisions and more divisions. Okay? Uh, the, the courts have pronounced themselves. And they raised issues, the High Court, raised very, very pertinent issues, which they attempted to cure through this bill. I am not sure if they will succeed in curing them. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that is not proper for now because I'll be anticipating debate on a matter which is before the House. So my take is that uh, those who are in charge, the sponsors, the authors of this housing levy, need to step back. Step back. Take a breath. <laughs> yes. And... Uh, and uh, really ask themselves uh, pertinent questions. Do we need to push this matter the man in the manner we are pushing it? Or can we, for a second, listen to Kenyans? Okay. Yes, and do it differently. Yeah. The president <coughs> is torn between implementing his development agenda and obeying the courts. What is your stand in what's happening? In that <coughs> dilemma that the president has? The two cannot be mutually exclusive, Ken. You can implement your development agenda or program at, and at the same time, obey courts. Okay? Because courts are there for a purpose. They are the arbiters in disputes between Kenyans themselves and between Kenyans and the state. So the courts have got their place. It does, they don't stop the government from implementing their projects. But the projects must be implemented in a proper manner, within the confines of the law and the constitution. Mm -hmm. That is the point really here. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really want those projects to be implemented really, everywhere in the country, but they must be done properly. Yeah. But if every other time you attempt to implement a project, you are facing court injunctions, then it also raises questions, really, as to what kind of advice or legal uh, uh, advice you are getting, and if at all you are getting it, whether you are taking it or not. You could be getting advice, but perhaps you don't uh, 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 implement the advice you get. So I think, uh, I think uh, uh, we should not create a, a, a mountain out of an anthill. We should not actually blame the courts for our own problems as a country okay. or for the problems of the executive, which is their own creation. Okay. okay? Yeah. As I let you go, I need to talk about your party leader. Um, there are talks that uh, President William Ruto and uh, the Foreign Affairs CS Prime Cabinet Secretary Musali Mudavadi are lobbying for Raila Odinga to get to replace Musa Faki for at the Commission, African Union Commission. Is this thing, is this something that uh, is abound or it's just in the rumor mills? First and foremost, I don't want to comment on that issue, but even as I decline to comment on it, my understanding of the process for election of the African Union Commission chairperson is that the candidate themselves must first of all express interest and submit the application before their host government or states can endorse them. It's not the other way around. So what we are talking about, I can see in the media today, speculations here and there, is misleading. You can't put the cart before the horse. And I'm not speaking for the right one, the Borella or Modo Dink. If and when he decides to go for that position, and I'm sure you know he's eminently qualified, 
he will speak for himself. And in fact, he will have to submit his own uh, application by himself. Okay? It is not for anybody in government to be going out there claiming that he is rooting for Raila Odinga as a candidate. When Raila Odinga himself has not spoken. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm letting you go. Thank you very much. ODMPG. When are we seeing it? No, we shall be holding one soon. We haven't agreed on How the date. How soon is it? Well, it's very soon because the session has just started. Uh, and uh, we have, have to, to look at our diaries and mm -hmm. see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, is, is, is the expulsion or intended expulsion of uh, renegade or rebel members uh, still big on your agenda or you decided to settle? That's a very general question. The party has got its disciplinary mechanisms, okay, internal disciplinary mechanisms that are invoked whenever a need arises and we deal with one each case or its own merit. Every mm -hmm. single case is dealt with on its own merit. Thank you, and I thank you so much for coming and for sharing. We're looking forward to the third session of the 13th Parliament and uh, we'll be inviting you back to the round table. Um, thank you for hosting me. Asante Sanandas, I let him go after they threatened to paralyze.